here is Bob Hope. A Danny little group. Thank you very much. Say, there's a new safety campaign to make drivers as courteous on the road as they are in their own homes, and they're even giving out windshield stickers that say, Make courtesy your code of the road. Of course, even with these stickers, my next door neighbor had an accident. He had so many stickers on his windshield, he couldn't see where he was going. <laughs> we waited as long as we could. <laughs> But I think drivers are becoming more courteous. Last week, I saw a three-way collision between a coffee truck, a meat truck, and a bread wagon. Instead of fighting, the drivers pulled over to the side and made coffee and sandwiches. <laughs> That's it. Now, if you've ever been hit by a car while crossing the street, this new campaign will benefit you. Drivers are now signing promises not to hit the same pedestrian twice. <laughs> and they're asking you to please use hand signals. But have you ever noticed the hand signals women use? They're like a movie trailer. They arouse your interest without giving away the plot. <laughs> it's a small audience, but very interesting. <laughs> now, Jane Russell doesn't always use hand signals. I saw her driving one of those low-slung English cars, and just before she made a left turn, she put her leg out. It was the first time I ever saw a car being followed by a traffic light. <laughs> but if you're a pedestrian in California, you do get one break. You can always spot a careless driver by the letter on his license plate. For instance, the letter A means a slow driver, B is a cautious driver, C is a fast driver. And then there's triple Z. That's look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> I'll never forget when I got my first driver's license here. The examiner said, do you always stop for a red light? Do you always obey the speed limit? And do you always give the proper hand signals? I said, yes, sir. He said, shake, stranger, and welcome to California. <laughs> But we do have some very careful drivers out here. Take Jack Benny. He drives very slowly, but that's just to save gas. In fact, he doesn't really drive his car. Rochester walks ahead of him with a magnet. <laughs> but safety is really important when you remember the old saying that it takes 2,000 nuts to hold a car together and only one to scatter it all over the road. <laughs> so let's take the advice of the professional truck drivers. Practice courtesy and cut down your speed. And you may save your own life. And besides, I need all the listeners I have. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Southern California is made up of small communities where the people are all neighbors. And like everyone else, Bob has them. Now, one of Bob's neighbors is Richard Widmark. And a few days ago, Bob went over to his house to ask him to appear on our show today. Gee, this place looks very impressive from out here in front. Signs of danger, electric gate, do not touch, 5,000 volts. <laughs> I know how to get through those electric gates. I'll just lift the latch with this wooden pencil. Oh, well, my coat looks more casual without sleeves. Hey, please, me open get for you. Good, it's the gardener. Oh, thank you. Also. Gee, your shrubbery looks nice, and that hedge running around the side must be the tallest in North Hollywood. Must be nine or ten feet high. Oh, yes, sir, you bet. Very tall. Also, very thick, you bet you. Say, what? <laughs> Say, uh, why did you let it get so tall and thick? To keep out stray cats and dogs? Yes, sir. Also, keep out somebody next door named Misa Hope. <laughs> Mr. Hope, now, why would the Widmarks want to keep him out? Oh, the many reason. <laughs> when Mr. Widmark a building house, Mr. Hope come over night time, steal many bundle shingles. <laughs> oh, now, maybe one or two shingles, but I'm sure he didn't take very many. Oh, no? Take a look on top of Mr. Widmark's house. <laughs> one half a top in redwood. And look what they have to use to finish the other half. Gee, surplus army blankets. <laughs> I wondered why the whole second story flapped on windy nights. <laughs> well, I've wasted enough time standing here. I better go up and knock on the door. Yes? Say, I'm 
your neighbor, Bob Hope. I just thought I'd drop over and say hello. Hello. <laughs> no, no, open up. Boy, hey. Hey, hey. Let me in. I want to talk to you. What do you want? Could I come in, please? Well, I guess so. The servants have all been vaccinated. <laughs> Look, I don't know why you're taking this attitude. I'd feel a whole lot friendlier toward you if you were a better neighbor. Since I've lived next door to you, a lot of things have turned up missing around here. Are you insinuating that I took them? Well, all I know is that last year, most of the fruit on my trees disappeared. Yeah, well, the birds around here eat a lot of fruit. Yeah, I know. And according to my wife, you've got the biggest beak in the flock. <laughs> Now you listen to me. <laughs> I've got a few complaints against you. Oh, yeah, for instance. <laughs> well, for one thing, during that last storm, the rain came right through my roof and leaked into the living room. All right, what about it? Why do you buy such cheap shingles? <laughs> and, buddy, I got something else in my mind. When I moved in here, I knew you had a right-of-way across the back of my property. Anyone else would have forgotten about it, but not you. Well, I was entitled to that piece of land, so I'm using it. Yeah, but what can you do with a patio 75 feet long and one foot wide? <laughs> well, it is a little cramped. It's so narrow out there, I can only barbecue a few things. I'm getting tired of roast eel with a banana in his mouth. <laughs> I'll try to be a better neighbor from now on. While I'm here, there's something I want to ask you. What's that, Bob? Look, I'd like to have you appear on my radio show. Yeah, I guess I can make it. My agent will drop around with a contract for you to sign. Oh, look, we're neighbors, Bob. Do we need a contract just for me to be on your show? Look, I learned a long time ago, never trust anybody. Well, okay, if that's the way you want it. Oh, by the way, coming in your front gate, I got quite a shock. Oh, yes, the front gate is electric. Why don't you go out the back gate? It's right over there. Oh, thanks. That's it. Now, just reach in and lift the latch. Oh, oh, oh! You're right, Bob. Never trust anybody. <laughs> Here's Maggie Whiting with less sound of the boys doing Where's Your Heart. Maggie, move in. Here's with a special guest from the studio audience, Bob Hope. Right in, honey. Bob. How are you? Fun, thank you. How are right. you? Just wonderful, honey. And you can uh, analyze my handwriting, huh? Yes, I've been doing it over 20 years. Is that right? I'm at the Mission Beach Amusement Center, right outside of San Diego there. Oh, is that true? Oh, that's mm -hmm. a beautiful place, isn't it? I like it very, very Fine. much. Fine. Do you want me to write my name? Your name and your home My real, real name place. or my, uh... Doesn't matter, really. Or my traveling name. <laughs> Might left way if you wear some shirt. Oh, now don't snitch. <laughs> they didn't know that, and you have to tell them. But now, do you want, really want my real name or my mm -hmm. theatrical name? It doesn't matter, really. You know, my I, I work under the name of Key Luke. You know. <laughs> no, uh, would you like a Bob Hope or a Robert Hope? Or I have then I have my bank name. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm overdrawn. No, I'll just put down. Uh, I'll just put down. Uh, <clears throat> stuff here, and you can work it out yourself. Well, the, well uh, the way you make your L's indicates you're a rugged individualist. Keep moving. <laughs> and uh, your H's indicate... Tell this girl knows what she's talking about. I what? You're kind of born tired. <laughs> Where is that on the paper? Your H's. <laughs> but your B's indicate you're a very generous person. Keep moving, Barbara. And you have a tendency to procrastinate a little too much. Yes, a little. Huh? Wait, I want to run down and look that up. I'll be right back. Your E's indicate you have a tremendous amount of executive ability. Yeah, I guess so. Get me a cup of coffee. Don't stand there. And uh, the L's and the S's show you have boundless energy, enthusiasm. Oh. Would you make a capital M and a capital W with the I top just there? love it if it helps our so association much. at all. Capital Y? Capital M or W? That's right. I see. Oh. Thank you. You see the stroke here? That's my executive M. <laughs> the loop indicates <laughs> that um, your person is very secretive. You very rarely take anyone into your confidence. That comes from working in the road pictures. 
<laughs> Barbara, I didn't mean to cut into your uh, handwriting you're reading there. Is that for that, that to it? Oh, yes, that's quite all well, right. Well, honey, when I get down here, I'm going to drop in and see you. You do that. Well, thank you very I'm much. very happy. Thank you for thank reading you. my handwriting. Barbara Edwards, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice. You know, ladies and gentlemen, Hollywood is entering a new phase in movie making. Will the new pictures measure up to the great old films that made Hollywood the entertainment capital of the world? Well, I've been wondering about that, too. Will anyone ever forget such pictures as Hell's Angels, Wings, The Big House? The chic, no dick, great pictures like that live forever, and they're a real challenge to movie makers today. Yeah. Who could possibly play Rudolph Valentino in the chic today? <laughs> you silly boy. <laughs> Hand me my turban in my tent and let's go. You sent for me, O oh chic of the desert. Yes, Ali Ben Huha. I am deeply offended. Why is it that I have not received any gifts lately? Have patience, master. As the Arabian prophet once said, Alu Moharu Abu Salem Dula Akbar. What does that mean? The check is late from Standard Oil. <laughs> I am lonely here in my tent. Oh, how is that possible, old master? You are the most... That's not old, old master. Old <laughs> master. No offense, Bob. No offense. Let me do that again. Please do. How is that possible, old master? Oh. Master? <laughs> you are the most adored man in Arabia. True, true. I am lovable. <laughs> Your Highness, how can you say that you are lonely? Just this week alone, you have married three blondes, a gorgeous brunette, and two ravishing redheads. I know, I'm in a rut. <laughs> Beg pardon, sir. Yes? Is there room in that rut for two? <laughs> Very clever. You know, I am amused. May the desert winds cool your brow, and may all your camels smoke doctors. <laughs> surprise for you that may cure your loneliness, O oh, Sheik. Just this morning, I bought 12 new slave girls for your harem. Oh, that says Roebuck has everything. <laughs> Bring on the girl. Girl? <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. I like that little one on the end, those flashing eyes and that lovely blonde hair. Ooh, come here, dear. You should choose me, that I may be allowed to remain in your magnificent presence. Mm. Oh, please, Highness, may I kiss you? Just the lower lip. <laughs> Most girls aren't strong enough to take both. Have you kissed that many women? Every week I have to send my lips to the shop to be retreaded. <laughs> Tell me, my child, what is your name? I've been named Donkara, Pearl of the Desert, daughter of the father who is the shepherd of a thousand sheep and sits on the mountaintop contemplating the drifting sand, but, well, you may call me what my friends call me. What is that? Sam. <laughs> I wear splats a lot. That's not be funnier than the sheik, huh? <laughs> Ali ben Huba. Yes, my lord. Clear the tent. I'm alone with a beautiful slave girl. You know the procedure. We are not to be disturbed under any circumstances. And I will bring in the television set. <laughs> now, my little orchids, we are alone, the two of us. Come into my arms, and I'll tell you why they call me the greatest lover in Arabia. Would you mind not breathing so heavily? You're inhaling the tent steak. <laughs> Be careful. Last week I started a sandstorm. Why do you keep your lips from me, Master? Kiss me. Very well. My kiss is the most powerful in all Arabia. I have kissed many women, but they have never survived the experience. <laughs> you understand me? They have never survived. I am not afraid. Very well. Here. I 
I kissed you. That was just the puckering up. So you Stark and Bob, the Sheik is a wonderful picture. Yes, and after the Sheik came the great pictures of World War I. Hell's Angels, Wings, wonderful stories of action and heroism. The time, 1916. The scene, an airdrome somewhere behind the Allied lines in France. You sent for me, Major Taliwaga? Yes, I did, Flight Lieutenant Hope. At ease, trade dress, ten her taut arms, and as you were... What are you doing? I'm mad with power. <laughs> you sit down, Lieutenant Hope. Thank you. Lieutenant, I believe we have a plan. I've called you here because you have a splendid flight record. How true. I'm a specialist. Took my training in Paris at the Follies Burlesque. The Follies Burlesque? <laughs> yes, I'm a specialist in takeoff. Splendid! Splendid! I display of humor. You shall be decorated. Step forward and I'll pin another tea bag on your chest. <laughs> oh, thank you. Welcome. Hope you have been selected as the first man in aviation history to drop a bomb from a plane. A bomb, sir? According to our schedule, you are to do your bombing tomorrow, leaving the aerodrome wheels up at 7 in the morning. Oh, but, sir, I'm a mess at 7 in the morning. I couldn't let the ground crew see me in that condition. Oh, How's eight? Wish I could, sir, but I'll be busy making an entry in my diary. <laughs> oh, very well. How's ten? Eleven? Well, let's say noon, shall we? Heavens, no, I'm terribly sorry, but at noon, I'm planning to do something very urgent. Been putting it off for a year. My word, what can that possibly be? I'm going to dessert. Tell you all that. <laughs> Those old war pictures were great, weren't they, Bob? Yeah, and after them came the gangster era, the pictures that prove crime doesn't pay, where the camera took us right inside the big prison. show off. Okay, Lefty. Here's another rat to keep you company. All right, you. Get in that hole. Well, I got company. What's your name, punk? Blackie Widmark. Yeah? Yeah. Why do they call you Blackie? I never take a bath. <laughs> Where are you from, pal? Texas. Born and raised in Texas. Spent all my life in Texas. Never set foot out of Texas. What's your name? Pittsburgh Phil. <laughs> what are you in for? Grand theft, forgery, blackmail, kidnapping, counterfeiting, and murder. Yeah, what kind of sentence they give you? Sixty days. <laughs> Only 60 days? How come? I'm a member of the automobile club. <laughs> How long you in for, buddy? 875 years. <laughs> what are you going to do when you get out? <laughs> hey, we got to break out of here. Think you can do it? I got a gun, see? My wife has been visiting me every Thursday, and she slipped it to me one part at a time. She's been slipping me parts for other things, too. What do you mean? Look here, under the bunk. Wow! A Cadillac! <laughs> I thought it was a cockroach with fins. <laughs> okay, we'll make a break. First, we'll stash the heater, and if the screw gives us a rumble, we'll clobber him with a Roscoe. Right, right. We'll call my twist in shy and lay him out in the rattler if we can't find a short or a heap. Okay, let's cut. Douse the glim. Don't forget the Gitas. Uh... There's just one thing, pal. What's that? What are we talking about? <laughs> I was hoping you'd know. <laughs> oh, why kid ourselves? It's too late to break out now. In a few minutes, he'll be here. We'll be going to the electric chair. Yeah. Any regrets? Nah, if I had to do it all over, I'd do the same thing again. Only this time, I wouldn't leave fingerprints. <laughs> there here they are. I guess this is it. No, it isn't. Let's hide how can we hide in this little cell? Follow me. All right, come out, you two. Hey, where'd they go? They're not in here. They're not? Well, they must be. Where could they possibly hide in a prison cell? Hey, Bob, where are we hiding? That's the nice thing about Cinerama. We're sitting out in the audience. 